Welcome, everybody, to uh, Wake It to Win. It's the last day of the year. You must be wondering uh, what's going on. Well, um, we're in three different parts of the of the country. I'm sort of uh, out here at the dam, as you can see in the background, and I'll give you a silly reason why now in a moment. Uh, Darren uh, is in his natural spot in, in the Western Cape, right, Darren? Yes, I'm in the Western Cape, and the weather is beautiful this time of year. And I look forward to the, the season ahead of us. We've got the Queen's Plate weekend next weekend and the Met towards the end of the month. So really good uh, racing ahead of us. Brilliant. And unfortunately, um, uh, Daryl's not in picture because he, he's not so well. He's man down, so to speak, but he's been good enough to join the show. Daryl, thanks very much. I know uh, not, the, I mean, not the best way to end off the year, but uh, let it come and let it go is what I say, right? Yeah, Clyde, uh, the viewers will just have to excuse my my sneezing and my coughing, uh, but uh, I think it's more important to to focus on the winners than uh, my, my sickness at the moment. Fair enough, I understand that. Sorry about that. I hope you, you'll be okay. Well, yeah, you guys may just want to, uh, to see this. I don't know if you can, can you see what's going on here on the screen at the moment? Um, so I just want to show this to you. I don't know if you can see it at the moment. I'm trying to show you the bold dam. Can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Yeah, so we're on the banks of the Val Dam wall, yeah, on the river, and they've opened up because it's at 107 centimeters or something. For those who know, it's overflowing, so they've had to open up. Look at how the people come and flock here to come and actually see what's going on, to see the water as the banks open, the, as the gates open. So you're at Riverview Pub, and um, it's actually uh, it's actually incredible the way these guys do it. I must say, that what, as to what's going on, but I have to tell you that. Uh, more than that, we need, like you say, we need winners. So let's get straight into the show and uh, see what's going on. We'll show you the, the whole way to, to win um, episode as to what the plan is. I'll, I'll get that, boys. I'll get that up for you now, guys. I just wanted to ask you, um, are you confident about the weekend? Can we, is it a good one to get involved in? I mean, you guys have been studying. I, would... I, told, I told the WhatsApp group guys that have been studying all night and what our plans are. Yes, I, I really believe that we're going to catch the pick six tomorrow. And uh, there's a nice double strike as well for the viewers out there. And I'm sure we can bounce back to best form again. Okay, well, that's brilliant. That's, that's all we need at the end of the day um, is to make sure that we can. I know, Daryl, that you haven't been that well, but I mean, I take it that you've also been, you've been looking at it too. Uh, Clyde, I must be honest, we've got some cracking horses lining up in the new year, uh, the first day of the new year. And, uh, you know, it's so much easier finding winners uh, in good fields when there's good horses running yeah. uh, compared to moderate horses. So I think we've got a chance. I think we're going to start off the new year with a big bang. Okay. Have you guys got the the, the, the show on, on your side? Can you see it? Yes, that's all perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure so that we can get that going. All right. Well, let's start um, with the business of the of today's show. And once again, we want to just thank everybody for, um, for joining us uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, the, the show has been going for a while now. We want to congratulate the winners on the, the, the Betway jerseys that uh, were given away by, kindly given away by Betway. Thanks to them. And well done to Greg and Jay. They got some of that. As you can see, all already signed and uh, on their way to, to both Greg and Jay who uh, participated in that act, um, promotion. Now, 0691643272, we loaded another 25 names just this morning on the WhatsApp group. Welcome to you, new guys. Hope you have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful trip with us. And we just want to thank from the team, we want to thank all those who assisted, waited to win in reaching its goals. Um, and I'd like to uh, obviously remind you about how this all started, if I can. And you'll remember that we, we had Striker Stratum on our show. Uh, when we went into the Durban July, we had quite a lot of views that day. As you can see there at the bottom, almost 7,000 views on the show just that day with Striker on. Gavin Arena joined us after he won the July. Joe Soma joined us, if you remember, when he was going into the Champions Cup meeting. And uh, we had a, a great chat with him. Some of, the, some of our other guests on the show over here that I can show you quickly. Um, there's a look at Warren Kennedy and uh, Calvin Habib, Lyle Hewitson, Muzi Yeni, David Thistleton. We were guests on our show, they all played a part. And then, of course, our journey took us to Betway when they started activating in South Africa, horse racing in South Africa, and uh, were taking us through their journey. We thank them. And then, of course, we had that uh, live show discussion, the live panel discussion out, at, um, uh, out in Rosebank side, and with all those who participated, thanks very much to them. And also just to thank everybody uh, that I thought of that have 
somehow supported waited to win in one form or the other, um, whatever it may be, we really want to thank you all very, very much. Whatever role that you've played, because I know, I know that you have played a role one way or the other through supporting the show. And um, we really and truly appreciate it. May 2022 uh, be everything of the best and the Jewish yourselves. Let's get straight into the Turfing Team meeting now. Remember, we're coming to you quite early Friday, so these are early changes. That scratch in the first, we've got uh, seven and 12. In the last race, they've taken Halloween out. Got a foot abscess, unfortunately. Had a chance, but not going to run on Saturday. And there's just a few jockey changes we've got for you, where Savanga Kamal and Musa Yeni have picked up a few rides um, as far as Saturday's meet is concerned. And I'll start straight up with you, Darren, where we go into the first leg of the pick six, where at the moment they're betting the pair uh, marching on together and sparkling water, both numbers two and five, at 22 to 10 each. Yes, you know, I really believe that Sparkling Water should be a, a firm favourite in this race. Um, she's really going to relish the 2,400-metre trip. She has been the trip once before where she challenged, uh, she she chased home War of Athena in the Oaks. And her last starts in the Summer Cup, she was tailed off turning for home, and she made up ground to run only four and a half lengths of flying carpet. Um, I did say a while ago she's going to be a better four-year-old and best over the marathon journeys. So I think Sparkling Water, she is best weighted in the race with 54 and a half kilos and a merit rating of 109. I think she's a very hard horse to beat. And I, I do believe that we can start a nice to cock double with Sparkling Water. Um, next best, I would say Smoking Hot. She's uh, got 50 and a half kilos on her back. If you look on a line of form in the Java handicap, over course and distance, she beat marching on together by half a length. And uh, that day there was two and a half kilos difference. There's now seven and a half kilos difference in the weights in favor of smoking hot. So five kilos better off with marching on together for a half a length beating. So she'll be my clear second choice. And then marching on together will be my third choice. Who's done really well since relocating to the high fault. He has, uh, his merit rating has uh, risen from 98 up to 111, but he's very capable on his day, and he was impressive last time out. Okay, so you are big on sparkling water, uh, Daryl. How did you how did you see it? God, I do believe this race uh, is going to favour the fairer sex. Uh, obviously, sparkling water. She earned her rating in the Oaks over the similar trip a mile and a half, um, and she's very well treated over here. So she's certainly the horse to beat. But she is giving a fair chunk of weight away to the the the, the mayor in in smoking hot, um, and she's she comes in second best weighted, only a pound inferior. So I think the two fairer sex will dominate over here. I just want to possibly adjust my bar pot. I, I made uh, I originally made four runners in this leg of the bar pot. I'm only going to go the two of them now. I'm only going to go five and eight. So if possible, I'd like to adjust that later. But I do believe Darren's. Spot on over here. I think Sparkling Water is going to take a power beating. If uh, Smoky Not jumps on terms and gets into the race, she'll be the favourite's biggest danger. Okay. Well, watch out for that. Race number five on the card. Let's go straight into that. And this is where Rain in Holland and Supreme Quest at the moment are um, dominating at uh, 22 to 10. I'm quite big on the Cornet Spice stable on Saturday. I think they're going to open up with a bang New Year's Day. I really do. I'm big on Supreme Quest, Daryl. Um, I, I just want to check, would you be on side with that? Absolutely, Clyde. She's going to strip much, much fitter. I, th I thought that was a very fair comeback run of a distance sharp of her best now. And you just have to go to that run where she finished second behind Big Burn and have a look at that form line, how well it's worked out. Uh, they pulled well clear of the, th of the pack, the remaining pack of the, uh, that day. And uh, she should get, once again, the run of the race. And if you just have a look at the best weighted column, she, is, she comes out tops over here. Um, she's, gonna, she's another one that should be right there at the finish. But Clyde, I'm looking uh, towards a rough year over here to be her biggest danger. Some might be scratching their heads, especially when it comes to the rating and the form. But I think number nine in Bearwood is much, much better than her latest run at the Vol. On that occasion, she never, ever got into the, the race. And um, and uh, I think nothing on that day really ran on. So I'm, a, I'm willing to put a line through that run. I think she's much better than that run. And I'm just hoping she's able to break on terms 
and Gavin can get her a little bit closer to the pace because we've seen on debut that she can really turn it on and she certainly has ability because she was far from disgraced uh, when they when they backed up after a maiden victory um, down, at, down in KZN. I, she's got ability. I know on rating she's got it all to do, but I think she's a nice inclusion for trifexes and swingers. So I'm with you over here. I think Spanish uh, Supreme Quest is certainly the filly to beat. But my each way value in the race, number nine in Bearwood. Yeah, and that's 16 to 1. Uh, you can get it to 16, 20 to 1, number nine in Bearwood. So there's a there's a great one for Cortez. So maybe we go 2 9, 2 9, field, field, or something like that. Um, uh, let me bring Darren in here. Darren, yeah, let me ask you your take on Supreme Quest and what do you think of him, Bearwood? Well, I like Supreme Quest. Um, it's just that her, she's having a second run after rest very close together to her first run. So I'm hoping that doesn't affect her. But uh, she will strip a fit a horse. She's got a one draw. And on that run in the Tequini Stakes behind Rain in Holland, there was a neck separating them. And Supreme Quest is now three kilos better off. Yeah. So it brings her right into the race with a, a big, big chance of winning. And she will, she will be right there at the finish. Uh, Rain in Holland, I would have preferred the mile trip for her. Over the 14, she seems to come off the bit quite early in the straight, and then she starts to pick it up very late. So she will be staying on, on at the finish and should be involved in the money. Uh, another two runners I want to mention is Etern Eternity Ring and Sprinkles. Now, on their last run in the Phillies mile, there's only a nose separating them. Uh, Sprinkles was staying on really strongly, and she is unbeaten over 1,400 meters, and she looks to have a bright future. So I wouldn't ignore Sprinkles. An eternity ring, very effective over 1,400. I mean, she's run three lengths off Desert Miracle, four lengths off in the Tequini behind Rain in Holland, which I think she's a bit better than that. And then she did win her 80 handicap over the 14, and her last run was a cracker. So I wouldn't be ignoring them. I'm going one, two, five, and six in the pick six, um, no particular first choice in the race. And would you put in Bearwood in the in your trifectas in Cortez? I haven't. Uh, I would. I, I had a bet on her last time out. I was a bit disappointed, but she seemed, uh, it seems like she needs a lot further. She was just uh, very flat footed. Uh, she was caught for speed. And I think she'll come on a lot from that run. But this is a tough race, second run after rest. Okay, so perhaps trifecta Cortez at this point in time. The sixth race on the card. Uh, Let's have a look at this, where Cornet Stitch comes to the fore. They dominate the market here, Darren, with William Robertson. And equally, like um, like the previous race, I'm as equally as confident and think that uh, they've all got William Robertson to beat you, Darren. Yes, I do agree with you, Clyde. Um, William Robertson, I believe his best trip is 1,400 metres. Um, he's been the trip once where he beat Bart of Avon in a tight finish. And his comeback run on the 20th of December, uh, same date as Supreme Quest made a comeback run. They're both uh, coming back second run after rest today. And uh, he ran a really good race behind Winter Smoke. He was staying on nicely behind runners. And he's going to tighten up a much fitter horse. So William Robertson, yes, uh, he is the horse to beat. Um, another horse I fancy quite a lot here is Super Excited. Um, I believe he's also a 1,400-meter specialist. He tried the Dingons last time out. And he was very far out of his ground uh, turning for home. And he did make progress to run fourth, only four lengths off safe passage. Now, I think his class carried him through to, to stay the mile that day. But I think he's a much better horse over 1,400 meters. And he's got a good draw. So I'll make him one for the shortlist. Then you bring in a horse like Prince of Fire. Uh, he's won three from four starts. He has beaten Super Excited quite comfortably in the yeah. past. Um, but um, last time out over the 1,400 meters, uh, he did it a little bit hard in front, but uh, he, his class carried him through. Uh, that was against Weaker, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes from a one draw. He may be the horse that uh, that goes to the front again and controls the pace from the front. And then another one I've thrown in is the Philly Super uh, Perfect Witness. A very good run in the Epitombi Stakes last time out, and she's very effective on the stand side track, so another one to consider. Yeah, we made her a good thing, remember, last time when she did run perfect witness. So tell me now, um, Daryl, let me bring you... Good to see Anton Marcus on the half, Al. Uh, Clyde is not actually riding on... Oh, he's gone, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. so... Okay, he's down. So Samanga right. Kamala's taking his yeah. ride on number three, Prince of Fire. 
Okay, that's um, the change earlier. Yeah, let's just go back to that. You're correct. Okay, yeah. Um, I just want to touch on one that Darren hasn't touched on, and this is uh, number six, Out of Darkness. Out of the Darkness. Now, I know he's well out at the weights, but uh, one has to believe that he's very unexposed, Clyde. And you just need to go have a look at his later starts. He was he was butchered, to put it mildly. He should have mm. won that and won it by several lengths. Um, mm. The most unluckiest loser I've seen in the year of 2021. Um I think he's got a lot more to offer. I know he's got it all to do at the weights, but uh, I certainly won't leave him, be leaving him out my perms. And then uh, number one, Pyromaniac. Uh, I don't know if he just doesn't enjoy the soft underfoot conditions, because if you have a look at his form line, he's run, his two worst efforts to date have been in yielding conditions. Uh, I think the track will come up good. I know there is a little bit of uh, showers expected over the next day or two, but... Uh, Certainly not enough to to uh, to change the c current condition of a good track. So I think he could he could put that below par effort last time out in the big rods behind him and run a much for more forward race. Uh, but but these are up and coming young three year olds, um, very very talented bunch, uh, a cracking race to watch. Mm. Okay, if you had to take a trifecta, how would you take it? Uh, I see the race a little bit differently to you guys. I'm going to be double floats in Pyromaniac, and not a trifecta. Um, double floats in Pyromaniac and Out of the Darkness. Uh, that's a, that's the way I concentrate uh, my trifectas and quartets on in the sixth. Okay, and Keegan Zamello is coming, right? We haven't got any changes around there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, interesting. So, not William Robertson, not for Daryl on the day. Uh, he's gone differently there. Let's go on to the Stay with you, Daryl, and have a look at the seventh where at the moment, Andrew Fortune and Stables in good form. Ryan Munger, Majestic Mozart, they top the board to 22 to 10 with Golden Pheasant as the second choice at 7 to 2. And Johnny Hero's back again, and he's currently trading at uh, 5 to 1. I, I made, personally, I made, it a, I made it a tough race, I, I, unless you're big on Majestic Mozart. Personally, I thought you have to go as wide as you can. Yeah, Clyde, I mean... You, you can't fault his form on the high felt, uh, the form of Majestic Mozart. Been very, very impressive in both his starts up here. Um, but in saying that, there's a lot of flying carpet form line coming into this race. And one horse that I do believe didn't run a race whatsoever is number one, Shango. Um, possibly another one that didn't enjoy the sticky conditions. But I thought his two, cracking, his two comeback runs were very, very impressive. Uh, I thought that was a great comeback run at the Vol on the classic track behind Al Mutana. He was staying on very starkly. And then he was dropped to the 1160, which is a trip uh, way too short uh, for him. And I thought that was very decent. And then I, I think uh, many were expecting a, a good run in the Summer Cup. But you can see he, he didn't put in an effort whatsoever. So mm. if you're just willing to put a line through his last start in the Summer Cup, You'd have to give him a chance of this course in distance because he is very, very effective on the stand side track. Yeah. Um, you can have a look at the best weighted column. He comes in best, third best weighted of the year. He's only a, he's only a kilogram worse off there uh, with a majestic Mozart. And I thought that the current odds of around 12 to 1 represents value. And I made him my value bet on the card. That's number one, Shango. But yeah. you, th there's so many others you can touch on over here because of the Summer Cup form line. I just look for a little bit of value. So I'm going for the one, Shango. He's my each way play. Okay, 12 to 1, you found Shango again. And Darren, let me come to you now. I know that uh, um, the Fortune Stable were very big on Majestic Mozart. They, 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 they predicted they'd run a massive race in the Summer Cup, and so they did. And um, it does seem to have come really well here on the high felt. I, was, I don't know, I just, I, I, you know, for, for, for some reason, I, I'm I'm concerned about the form line, and there's quite a lot of it in here. I, I, and and Daryl seems concerned too. What's your take on it? Well, I, th I made it quite a tough race. Um, Majestic Mozart would be my first choice because um, since he's gone up to the high fault, uh, the altitudes obviously helped him with his respiratory issues and all of that. So he's really come well. I mean, he couldn't do more than win by five lengths first time in the high fault and then run a cracking second to flying carpet where he actually looked to win at the 200. And I think the drop back to 1800 is going to be in his favor. So I think he could be the horse that goes up handy. 
I know Savannah Storm likes to go uh, flat out, and he may just sit uh, just off the pace. But I haven't taken any chances in a pick six. I've actually put seven horses, numbers one through to seven. Um, mm. There's not going to be much separating Majestic Mozart and Golden Pheasant. Mm. Now, Golden Pheasant's a seven-year-old, but he just keeps improving and improving. And they put him into the deep end last time in the Summer Cup from a wide draw, and he ran an absolute cracker behind Flying Carpet. So he will be right there once again with Majestic Mozart. Um, for the minor placings, this was Donald McDonald. I know he's not best weighted, but I think he's the type of horse that takes time to unwind. And he's had the one runner on the high fault at Turfontaine over the mile trip. And he really won a cracking race behind, uh, beating Sound of Summer that day. And he's also going to relish the, the 1,800-meter trip. And Gavin Van Sales having a really good time up on the high fault with a, a couple of his runners winning already. So I wouldn't exclude him. Second base, now he's been disappointing, but he, they have fitted the blinkers on to try and get that little bit extra out of him. And I'm hoping that he can return to best. Then Johnny Hero ran a really good race in the Summer Cup and then followed it up with a good run, running on strongly behind War of Athena in a pinnacle. He can't be ignored. I've also thrown in Shanga and Asterix. So for me, it is a wide open race. But I think that Majestic Mozart is the horse to beat, and he'll be right there at the finish. Okay, that's uh, the seventh on the card. The eighth now has come to um, Clafuti, who tops the board at number six on the card. Uh, Darren at 22 to 10. And um, having a look at what, uh, what she's taking on here, uh, personally, I've, I've, I thought hard to beat. Very hard to beat. Um, this is my double with sparkling water. Tafuti, 22 to 10, I saw a lot of value. I think she's a really, really top filly. Um, you know, in her second start, she ran in a juvenile plate be uh, beaten by Follow Me, and there she already sh showed a, a quality uh, ability. And winning a maiden uh, first run after a rest, then she was thrown into open company against Colts, won by four and a quarter lengths, unextended. Then her penultimate start behind Follow Me, uh, she was drawn nine out of nine, and they opted to ease her out to the back of the field, and I don't think it suited her. She likes to gallop along with the speed, and she did stay on late, but uh, she was never really in the hunt. And last time out in the Epitombi, uh, she was up with the pace, and she just faded out of contention very late behind Bold Fortune. She takes a drop in class here into a 97 handicap with a handy galloping weight of 54 kilos and a one draw, so she can sit in the box seat just off the pace, and I don't see anything challenging her here. Um, I've looked at, looked for dangers, and I couldn't really find much. Horses like Rosa Prima, uh, Fennec is meant to be claiming two and a half, but she's actually plus, half, plus one kilo. So she's actually from 52 and a half, when she should have been carrying 50, she's carrying 53 and a half, which is not in her favor. Then you've got horses like Rouge Lo, she's an eight-year-old, she's lost her form of late. You've got horses like Ideal Jet and Pin Up that are coming off a bit of a break. And there's not much else to challenge Clafuti for me. So I make Clafuti the best bet on the card in race eight. Yeah, I, you know, I thought there was not, you know, when you, when you look at the Mike Stock horses, and I remember when we spoke in the live panel show, we'll bring Daryl in here. We, um, we, we mentioned Mark's chick, and, I, you know, when you compare the two, I thought there was much of a muchness between the two. Disappointingly, uh, disappointing run from Mark's chick, Daryl, on, uh, on Tuesday night. Clyde, I believe she did have excuses. I think she was reported to have been pulling hard in the early stages. So she was doing it far too hard up front. Um, and obviously she's better than that. Maybe she's just better with one or two in front of her and, and uh, given some cover. And yeah. then she can uh, use her turn of foot um, when it, where it matters mm -hmm. most. But uh, yeah, this Clafuti, you can see she's off her highest rating now of 95. That means obviously she's still improving and uh, she's still got more to offer. And she's got a lot in her favor. Um, she's got a galloping weight. She's well drawn. She's fit. And she's taken on a few horses that are returning from her rest and not in the best form of their career. So she's certainly going to be very, very hard to beat. I'm just looking for trifectas and quartet inclusions. And I'm leaning towards number three, only the brave as the one to fill the exact position. Now, last time out of the seven furlongs in the sticky conditions, she was sort of flat-footed. 
and I'm expecting Muzi to make more use of her in the mile. I think this is probably be her best trip around about a mile. Uh, if he can get to the front and try to take the pace, I think with fitness on her side, she could be uh, the one you want to be uh, floating in, in the exactors and trifectas. And then another one, uh, but she's going to have a lot to do because she gives away ground at the start. She's number two, Peyton's tears. She, uh, she just throws her chances out the window. I mean, she gets left four or five lengths every, on every occasion. And if she's going to do that uh, against a fairly like Lafuti, she's got a work cut out. So I'm yeah. going to tip Lafuti very hard to beat. The danger for the exactors, number three, only the brave. Yeah, only the brave at 14 to 1. Hey, uh, you, you haven't, Mike's check hasn't been taken out yet. I haven't seen an update on that. Have you guys seen any updates on the scratches up to at this point in time? She's still running as far as we know. Yes, currently she's still going to be taking her plans. Okay, let's go to the ninth. And this uh, wraps up the pick six now. Hopefully we can end the year, um, begin the year, of course, with a, with a big win. And uh, let's see, escape artist Daryl for Sean Terry's top of the boards at, at 28 to 10. And um, I, I don't know what you make what you make of it. I mean, from my from my perspective, I thought maybe we could lean on escape artists at the back. What did you make of it? You there, Daryl? Are you are you with us, Darren? Um, yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, I'm yeah. Okay, go. You can go, Daryl. Okay, I thought number eight, uh, is, yeah, Escape Artists. That was a very, very uh, encouraging effort last time I Clyde. It proved that she does get uh, uh, the mild trip. And I think uh, Chase might have, um, will certainly know her much better on this occasion. And maybe he's just going to opt to give her more of a chance and challenge later on because when, when she... When she did hit the front, I think, in my opinion, she turned it up. So I think maybe he's going to opt to ride her more patiently. Um, so, yes, she is the first, uh, my first pick in the race. But it is, it is a Phillies and Mares handicap. And uh, you have to respect the likes of uh, number two, Flame Flower, Flower. Just because she's been very, very heavily supported on both occasions. And you know that poor, the poor pizza yard has got a lot of depth. Obviously, she's shown... Very, very classy work back home uh, for her to, to justify the support that she's, she's uh, uh, got on both her, uh, her starts to date. And uh, she may well be better than that effort last time out. So I think uh, Escape Arts is the one to beat. But I do respect Flame Flower. I think she could have a lot more to offer. And then you got the likes of number four, Trump, my queen. If she's not in need of the run, uh, she could have... She could be another one ahead of the handicapper because she never ever looked like winning at Scottsville uh, in July. Um, she only got going uh, within that final furlong of the race, and uh, she's obviously got some some ability. So she and we, uh, Darren touched on the stable's been doing very very well up here on the high fault. and then why yeah, another one that you want to throw in, but. Uh, if I had to narrow it down to two runners, Clyde would go escape artist to get it right this time with Chase Mojan in the irons. Her biggest danger, number two, Flame Flower. Okay, two and eight for you. And 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 Darren, how do you um? Uh, you I know you you, you made, made reference already to Gavin Van Zyl's, uh stable and perhaps Trump My Queen does come into the race with a chance. How do you how do you read it? Well, you know I was very strong on that Philly Halloween until she was taken out this morning. And then I've actually opted to go much wider in my pick six than I originally had. Um, Escape Artist, she's improving with each and every start. Um, she won not a strong maiden uh, back in September. And then she followed it up in open company, running a good fourth behind Timbavati River. And last time in the three-year-old handicap, 87 handicap she jumped up to, and she ran a cracker over the 1,700-meter trip. <laughs> so the 1,600 on the stand side is going to suit her down to the ground and uh, definitely one for the shortlist. <clears throat> this horse, Waya Yera. Now, interestingly, her dam, uh, Southern Pine, she ran, she won over 1,000 meters and 1,200 meters. Even though she was by Silvana, she was a sprinter. Uh, she has thrown one, uh, I think she threw Louisiana, who won the Jamaica handicap and uh, another feature 
in Durban over 17 or 1800 meters, but she was by Ideal World and Waya Yeras by Quirari. So it's, and her best form has been actually over the minimum trip of a thousand meters. Last time out over the 1400, she didn't find much the final 200 meters. So I have thrown her in just in case she sees the 16 out, but I'm not too sure she will. Um, others for the shortlist, you've got to throw in a horse like Me Time, number one on the card. Now her rating's down a couple of points. Uh, she's going to be competitive off this rating. Ryan Munger's ridden her uh, eight times for five paces. He knows her well. And at a decent price, Me Time, I wouldn't be excluding her from the pick six. I've thrown in Flame Flower. Uh, they have supported her heavily. I like the fact that they dropped her back to a mile. And um, I think she'll be right there at the finish. She is drawn a bit deep, but she likes to run handy. And then Dark Travel. Now, she's drawn deepest of the lot, but she likes to make a late run. She's probably going to pull in uh, to the back of the field and come charging home late. So I make it an open race. Uh, Escape Artist does look the horse to beat, but I'm looking to beat her in the pick six maybe with a horse like me time at a big price. Well, I am on Spitzer's side on Saturday, so I'm not leaving it out. Number one at 14 to one. Thanks for that, Darren. Uh, yes, your... Uh